Thanks to the work of the Melee community, it's possible to play Super Smash Bros. Melee entirely online from a computer, even after almost 20 years since the game's release. And with COVID-19 forcing communities to shift to an online space, it's more important than ever to know how to set up Netplay so you can play Melee with friends or even compete in online tournaments. This video will come in two parts. Part 1 will cover the basics of setting up Netplay, along with some handy tips you might not know. Part 2 will then cover the more advanced ways to reduce lag so you can improve your connection so it resembles offline melee as much as possible. If you're looking for a particular topic or question answered, here are the timestamps for what I'm going to cover in this video and you can jump ahead to those sections if you need to. Okay, so to play melee online you're going to need a couple things. Number one, a decent computer that can handle the game. Number two, a controller adapter for your GameCube controller. Number three, a melee ISO. Number four, the latest version of Dolphin, which is in this case Project Slippy R18. Number five, good internet, which is really DSL or cable, those should work fine. And number six, well technically optional, wired ethernet. If you're on a Wi-Fi connection, it's going to be choppy and just no one's going to be happy with that. Okay, so let's break it down in that order, starting with the computer. To run Melee properly, these are the minimum specs required, as you can see on screen. If you're not super familiar with computers, most modern PCs in the last five years should be more than able to meet these requirements. However, if you still don't meet the minimums, the most important component that affects Dolphin is your CPU, as some of these examples don't even run a GPU at all. So if you're looking to build a Netplay-ready machine, or upgrade an existing machine, start with your CPU first. In this case, I'd recommend AMD's newly released Ryzen 3 3100 for those on a tight budget, or the Ryzen 3 3 300X. Both are $100 or $120 USD respectively, and are more than capable of handling Netplay. Pair that with a compatible motherboard and 8GB of RAM, and you're basically good to go. As for the graphics card, if you're unsure how your GPU compares to the ones listed above, as they're admittedly from a list made in 2015, you can use this website to compare your GPU to it, but again, CPU is the biggest factor anyway. Any graphics card released in the last 5 years is more than likely to be good enough. However, if even after all of this you're still unsure, really the best way to check is just to set up Netplay, try running the game offline first, that way your internet won't affect the framing of the game in any way, and if you can't hit 60fps and you're noticing it's quite choppy, it's probably due to your system specs. Even then, you can look into certain ways to optimize your system to get the most out of it, so check out some links in the description or check out part 2 of this series. From there, you'll need an adapter. Right now I only have experience with two options, the Mayflash 4 port adapter and the official GameCube adapter made by Nintendo. While there are other manufacturers, I don't actually have experience with them and can't recommend them, as cheaper adapters can add a lot of lag, so this isn't really the area you want to cheap out on in my opinion, as the Mayflash 4 port adapter is already reasonably priced. Okay, next up is the Melee ISO. If you're not aware, that's basically just the game itself. So the legality of ISOs is a bit of a grey area, so do some digging to find one that works. Thankfully, a working Melee 1.02 ISO just happened to be on my computer. Wow, so lucky. So I'm good to go. Now it's time to download the program that emulates a GameCube on your PC, in this case a version of Dolphin known as Project Slippy R18. You can find a download link in the description, or you can follow the prompts on screen. Once you've downloaded it, extract it to its own folder using your preferred software. In my case, I like 7-zip as it's free and works great. After you've unzipped it, you'll need to open Dolphin itself. At this point, most of the default settings are actually ready to go, so there's only a couple remaining steps. First, you'll need to direct Dolphin so it knows where to find the Melee ISO. You know, the one that magically appeared on your computer? Locate the folder that the ISO is in, in my case it's in my documents folder, and select it. In the future, you should put any other ISOs in the same folder that you want to play on, so they'll appear in the drop down menu below. Next, you'll want to click on the graphics button in the menu, and from there, make sure you check the Use Full Screen option, as running the game in windowed mode will be quite a bit laggier. Again, do not run the game in windowed mode, we legit have pro players who don't know this and then complain about how laggy netplay is, so don't be that guy. I'd also recommend checking the show FPS and show netplay ping boxes. Finally, if your computer can handle it, you can go to the enhancements tab, click on the internal resolution menu, and upscale the game to 720p or 1080p or even higher to play Melee in HD. However, make sure to test if your computer can handle these settings by again trying the game offline first. Either way, it's perfectly fine to leave the settings unchanged, it's really just a preference thing. You also need to ensure that you've installed drivers for your adapter to work properly. If you've installed VJoy drivers in the past, make sure to uninstall them before moving on. Now you need to download Zadig to install the drivers. From there, open the options menu and click on list all devices. Then click on the drop down menu and select WP-028. Then ensure the USB ID is 057E0337. If you do not see this, then try plugging the adapter, specifically the black USB cord, into a different USB port. Make sure to select Win USB, then you can hit Replace the Driver. If it all worked out, you should be able to go to Dolphin, click on the Controllers tab, and see whether your adapter has been detected. Next, right click on the ISO itself and hit Properties. Then navigate to the Gecko Codes tab, and from here you can opt to turn game music off or on without it affecting your opponent's game music. 
Make sure to have one option selected though, as the game can desync if you don't have either option checked. More on desyncs later. Now you're ready to start Netplay itself. You can do that by either right-clicking the ISO and choosing Host with Netplay if you want to be the host, or by hitting Tools, Start Netplay to either host or connect to a game. Here you'll be taken to this menu. You can set your nickname in this box, and you'll have the option of selecting Host or Connect, depending on what you need to do. Netplay works by the host sending a code to their opponent and having them connect to the lobby like this. If you want to host, navigate to this tab and click on the ISO that you want to use, then click Host. In this window, you can then chat with your opponent or change the ISO you're using, but the most important values are the ping of your opponent and the buffer. Ping in this instance is basically a measure of the lag between you and your opponent. The lower the number, the better. To accommodate higher pings, however, you'll need a buffer. Without getting into the specifics, here are some good rules to follow. Number one, never go below six buffer. If you go below six, you're running melee faster than it is on a CRT, which can seriously mess up your muscle memory. It might feel better and you might even tech chase better, but the way faster melee works is it essentially runs the game with less lag and then compensates with the buffer to make it similar to a CRT so that you can play online. So if you remove that buffer, you're not playing a version of melee that's comparable to CRT. You're playing one that's faster. Number two, to determine what buffer you should pick, the rule of thumb is ping divided by eight rounded up. So 60 ping would be around eight buffer. But again, if your ping is super low, you should not go lower than six buffer. You'll also wanna make sure the buffer covers potential spikes in the connection. So even if your ping was 30, but it regularly spikes to 60, you want to choose a buffer that covers the spikes to keep the connection stable, as a stable connection is much more important than a low buffer connection. Number three, avoid pings with buffers higher than eight. Generally, most people would agree that eight buffer is sort of the limit in terms of a high quality of netplay experience. However, there are a lot of things that affect even this number, so really it does come down to feeling and taste. As long as it feels playable, you can continue to raise it, but know that the higher the buffer is, the more lag you're gonna have. Number four, be aware of your monitor. If you have a gaming monitor that runs at 120 hertz or 144 hertz, you'll experience less lag and will be able to set the buffer higher as a result. Because of this, you should set your minimum buffer to seven instead of six, as the reduced lag a gaming monitor offers makes it so that six buffer will be slightly faster than a CRT. This is particularly useful as a better monitor allows you to play opponents further away with a similar experience, but obviously they are more expensive. Number five, take advantage of the personal buffer system. Dolphin allows you to set a minimum buffer which affects the connection and a personal buffer which only affects your end of the connection. This is particularly useful if you want to keep a consistent feeling across all games or if you prefer a higher buffer than your opponent. I often set my personal buffer to seven as I have a 144 hertz monitor but keep the minimum buffer to six in case my opponent does not. Finally, number six, if you want to practice this on your own, make sure to set up a netplay lobby still to introduce the buffer and make it feel similar to the CRT and what you're used to playing online. If you just press the play button or double click on the ISO, yes it will start the game, but it won't have a buffer, so you'll go from 6 buffer to 0 buffer and that's just not going to feel right and it's a terrible idea. Now that you're ready to play, you need to find an opponent and there's a couple great places to do that. Generally the two most common options are to either go to Smash Ladder, which is a place where you'll find other people interested in playing in its own ranking system, or to join a netplay discord server and find people there. Also you can just ask your friends to play, send them a code, and go from there. If you're interested in playing doubles, that's also possible and it works in the exact same way. However, if you want to play with two or more people locally on the same computer while connecting to another online opponent or opponents, you can then set the ports in the controller menu like so. If you're looking to spectate games, it's also possible to do this without affecting the connection. Simply unport the player who is spectating and you should be good to go. This is how online tournaments work. Sometimes spectators will notice their game is a bit behind others, so to fix that, just hold down tab and it'll fast forward the game and catch you up. Okay, so maybe you've tried all these things and you're still having problems. Generally, problems fall into three categories. Number one, your computer can't handle Dolphin. Number two, you have network issues. Number three, you're having desync issues. Well, the first one is easily tested by running Dolphin online. Like I said before, if your computer stutters offline without connecting to an opponent, you'll have the same or worse issues online. One way to improve this is to go into the task manager, go to the details tab, find Dolphin and right click to set priority and set it to real time. This just tells your computer that this is a program that should be taking up the bulk of your processing power. There are other ways to deep load your system, however, which we'll cover in the next video. Network issues can be resolved in a variety of ways, but the most important thing is to play with a wired ethernet connection and broadband or cable internet or better. This will reduce variance in ping and prevent lag spikes. If you're playing with someone who has a bad connection, make sure to clarify that they're not running on Wi-Fi, and if you can't seem to get a stable ping, just play with someone else. Beyond that, in the second part of the series, I'll cover a bunch of ways to optimize your network to make it run even more smoothly. This leads us to the final issue, desync issues. 
Dolphin always has a built-in message that can let you know when you start the game. But what is a desync anyway? Desyncs often occur when something different is happening on both sides of the netplay game. The inputs are still the same on both ends, but perhaps the timing is slightly off and this causes problems. The best way to avoid desyncs is to ensure your settings are identical to your opponent, with the exception of gameplay music off versus on. Let's look at five of the most common reasons why desyncs occur. Number one, you have the wrong ISO. Probably the most common reason when starting out is that you have the wrong ISO, but it's easy to check. Go into Properties, Info, MD5 Checksum, and click Compute. From here, it will generate a code. Make sure that code is identical to this one. Number two, different aspect ratios. If your opponent is running the game in a different aspect ratio, you'll have issues. If you want to play widescreen melee, for example, that's possible by turning on the gecko code widescreen 169 and going to graphic setting and setting the aspect ratio to 69 or auto. However, if you do this, your opponent must do it as well, otherwise a desync will occur. Number three, netplay music off is improperly used. Make sure you and your opponent have either netplay music off or netplay music on selected. If you have both unchecked, you will get desync issues. Number four, different versions of Dolphin. Despite Slippy R18 being out for literally several years, some people are still running Dolphin 5.9. This is, outside of a couple exceptions, stupid and people should stop being lazy and download the latest update. But make sure to ask if your opponent is using a different version of Faster Melee if you're having connection issues. Number five, memory cards is enabled. In order to successfully netplay, memory cards must be turned off. This will already be the default setting, but make sure to keep it that way or you'll have problems. And that's the end of part one. In the next video, I'm going to cover much more advanced ways to get the most out of your netplay experience. This includes changes to your bio settings, changes to your display settings, changes to network settings, changes to your audio settings, etc. If you enjoyed this video or want to stay in the loop for part two, please subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when I make a new video. You can also support my channel on Patreon or sub to my Twitch channel. Finally, shoutouts to Autumn K for being a tier two Patreon supporter. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next week for part two.